I shall sing as long as I live and as long as I live I shall sing I see Studio One as Jamaica's Motown and it's like a pot of gold. It's a reservoir that cannot ever be empty. So I figure that with all of these beautiful songs and music that comes out of Studio One, I wanted to do an album titled Marcy Griffith Sings Studio One. So this is what this album is all about, me doing a selection of Studio One songs. The album should be released officially on June 14th. Bob was very special um, because the way he spoke and the things he did. I usually say to everyone that I'm glad I gave him flowers while he was alive. Bob never had to pass for me to say, wow, but he was this and was that. I recognized that this man was very special. He spoke different from everyone else. The things he said, I would look and marvel and say, what manner of man is this to talk like this? Yes. And he did some really unusual things. You know, I remember one day we were in the bus traveling and Seiko, the percussionist, he drank some orange juice and Bob sit down there and watching Seiko and then immediately after the orange juice, he had some milk. And Bob said, Oi man, he had make yogurt in your belly. <laughs> And everybody laughed and he wasn't even giving a joke. He was so serious, you know, he just was so different. And I remember if we go in the studio and if he comes up with an idea for us to sing, I3, it would be so different from ooh or ah, which is what every harmony singers do, ooh, ah. It would be something really unusual that when you hear it, you say, how oh, Bob could think about something like that. Every time I talk about Bob Andy, I have to give God thanks that I met him because as a young girl, vulnerable in a male-dominated business, God knows what would have happened. You know, if he was not there, because we became intimate friends, and he was one of the most jealous persons I knew. Oh, really? So because of that, no, he kind of ward off every other guy. I couldn't smile or do anything or shake any hand or anything. You know, it was, it, it was to my benefit. all musically inclined when they were younger but I never encourage it I always insist on them getting an education because when I see what happened to Jamaican entertainers not being able to you know you have to be knowledgeable you have to be able to read a contract yeah. even if you have a manager and someone who is representing you Whoa. I would encourage my children get an education first la, 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 la. Hey, let nothing spoil the i cannot change the way these people want to deliver the woman i can only tell them how i think give them my opinion but at the end of the day they they, they have a different vision and you don't have to go out there and sell yourself cheap or to go out there half naked, especially when you have a God-given talent. You can just go out there and stand and deliver and you touch souls, every soul, which no doctor in the universe can do. So you don't need to do that. 
And you know, I am just so sad when I see my sisters have to resort to, you know, certain things because we are beautiful, we are talented, we don't need to go there. But if that's their choice, what can I say, you know? I can only tell them how I see, as I said, and I love every single one of them. Honestly, I do. It's good today that in my time, it was male dominated strictly. But today, because of my influence, as they say, it's, I would say it's 50-50 now where the female is concerned. But it's a wonderful feeling that the woman, most of the women in the business today, people like Queen Africa, Tanya Stevens, Nadine, just to name a few, Itana, these are women that can stand on their own strong and defend themselves even without a manager. They are the voice of the people. So it's a good thing to know that all these strong, powerful women are in the business today. And even if it's five minutes longer than I have you.